Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? Hello everyone and welcome to Action RPG. I'm your host Aaron. And for today's video, we're headed to the world of Diablo 4. The campfire chat is now done. We now know the meat and potatoes that's coming for patch 111. And they did give us the dates for this as well. So this coming Wednesday, we'll get the full patch notes. And then the following Tuesday, August 8th, is when the patch actually drops. And I got to say, all in all, there was some good in here. There was some bad. But maining Barbaria. For season one, I feel very optimistic about the end of the season. And I feel like if you play Source or Barbarian, for the majority, for the most part, you're probably going to be pretty happy with this. So what we're going to start with for Dev Chat D4 edition, we're going to talk about item upgrades. Well, when we make changes to items, uh, specifically items like Uniques, mm -hmm. um, th many of these changes uh, only take effect on new items, right? Like, I think we have an example of a hell, of the hell hammer here. Yeah, kind of. Um, it's a little bit more complex than that. So we're going to delve into one of our examples of what we're updating here. Um, but when we update a unique item, um, we actually update hell hammer in two different ways. So we're increasing the duration that the ground is going to be ignited and burning, and then we're also increasing the damage. And that's the actual unique effect power, you know, the exciting thing that the item does. But you can see here on hell hammer, we're also doing another change where we're actually granting you a bonus critical strike damage and removing the bonus damage of crowd control enemies, right? So on the left, what you see here, when you log into the... Okay, I'm going to stop him right there. Now, if you were watching my stream live, before they talked about Hellhammer, I'm like, right now I'm updating my upheaval build on Icy Veins. I'm trying to use Hellhammer. I hope they buff that. Within 10 seconds, they're like, let's talk about Hellhammer. Freaking couldn't believe it. Anyways, so to break it down, Right now on this weapon, they're taking off damage to crowd control enemies and they're adding on crit damage that could mac roll up to 35%. That, that singular change will be a huge damage boost to this weapon. We still don't have vulnerable damage, which is, which is the quintessential stat or affix you're hunting for, but at least you are getting a big buff from there. And then the actual legendary affix is also getting a buff. Now, what they're trying to say is that me, who already has a Hellhammer, when I log into the game after the update, the legendary affix is going to be updated, but I'm still going to have crowd control on it. So I will have to find a new Hellhammer, and this is going to be the same for any unique that they change to actually get the affix upgrade on it. So that kind of sucks. What I said on stream is I feel like they came halfway. It's like, okay, you're getting a buff to all your items, but you're going to have to refine them. So that kind of sucks, but at least we're getting a buff on the items. Now I'm going to let him talk for a minute about future focuses. Listen to this. Um, the first one is kind of finding ways to bring different types of damage closer together. Um, as I'm sure many of you in the community know, uh, Vulnerable and Crit are really, really strong right now. Yep. Kind of a lot of the meta is about, um, you know, you make an enemy vulnerable and then you do bonus damage to them and then you stack as much crit strike chance and crit damage as you can and then you blow them up, right? Correct. Um, our game actually was foundationally made with other types of builds that aren't only those in mind, right? We have like damage over time or dot damage, um, things like Firewall um, or Shadow Necro does a lot of this. Uh, we also have overpower as a mechanic in our game and these other different ways to build your character we want them to have parity with you know vulnerable and crit damage so we're going to be trying to find we're, our goal is to find a way and we're working on it right now that all those different ways of dealing damage have a lot of parity so no matter if you're an overpower build or a crit build or a, you know a damage over time build you will be relatively equal in power to all the other different types of ways to play. That would be amazing. Um, so another one that we're looking at is adding could scaling do to builds and effects that don't really scale very well in the game. This is something that I think is a big opportunity for us to open up just excitement in different builds in the game. And what I mean by this is we have a lot of legendary powers and effects that like spawn a new thing. An example of this is like on the Barbarian, there's some legendary powers that spawn earthquakes or yep. dust devils. Um, another one is the Necromancer. My new has, like, build on Icy Veins, Leap and Quake. And these things, they do Big what we buff call already flat coming. damage, which is like we give it a damage number, and then that's how much it does, and then that damage number kind of scales with player level. Um, but what we find is that a lot of these things are really good in the early and mid-game when they drop, but then when you get to the really late game, they, they kind of fall off really hard. 
Um, and what we want to do is find ways to add scaling so that the player can opt into like making a build out of these things. So if I want to be an earthquake barbarian or a dust double barbarian, I can actually do that and it's supported by the game. Um, so that's something nice. that we're really excited about because we think that'll open up a lot more build possibilities. Mm -hmm. Ultimates are kind of in this range as well. That's a more long-term goal. But similarly, you know, a lot of ultimates are really strong in the early and mid game. You take it, it blows up the screen, feels great. And then the late game, a lot of ultimates that we see that are used are just used because they buff the player in some way. Yeah, right? they don't blow up the screen the same way anymore. Yeah, right. I want you to be excited to use Bone Storm because Bone Storm is awesome, not yeah. because it gives you a buff, right? Or yeah. you know, Grizzly Rage or other ones, right? So that's Ooh, kind of I like that Grizzly we're Rage. About. Uh, now, for the next fifteen minutes, they break down actual patch notes, which was which was actually pretty cool. I did enjoy this part of the stream. So it's one thing about me reading the patch notes. It's another thing about having the developer team read it, and then they actually go through the whys behind it. So I did enjoy this part of the stream. Now, I'm not going to watch. I'm not going to play that 15 minutes for you. I will link this in the description if you want to see it yourself, or you can just wait for the patch notes video coming next Wednesday. But ultimately, you have on here the source updates. You've got a lot of barbarian updates. You've got Druid in there, you've got Necro in there, and you've got Rogue. So every single class is getting changes, and all of these changes are buffs. I did not see any nerfs in here. And of course, the huge changes are focused around Barbarian and Source. And I think Source actually got the most, then Barbarian. But even if you're playing Rogue, Druid, or Necromancer, there's going to be something in there for you. Now I'm going to let them talk about design philosophy for a few minutes. And I just want to say, I don't agree. You'll hear. That we were concerned about when launching the game is we didn't want the Druid to like have just as many or more companions than the Necromancer. And they're stronger. It's like, well, where's the fantasy of the Necromancer if the Druid does it better, right? So that was something that we contended with a lot. I'm sure that... We're going to flex on that over time. We did add support. We still love companions on Druid, and we will absolutely be making it more of a thing, hence why we're buffing them a lot in this patch. Um, but we are careful about the design space and the fantasy of the different classes, right? We don't want all the classes to be exactly the same because then you don't feel different when you're playing. You don't have new interesting mechanics that are between them. Uh, we talk about that a lot on the team. It's very easy to be like, hey, just... This class doesn't have this and it's fun, give it to all the others, right? I think Necromancer and Move Speed is part of that where we overcorrected a little bit, where like we didn't want them to have a teleport or dash, right? Like a rogue. If Necromancer were dashing around everywhere, that, that's a weird <laughs> fantasy, right? But but not giving them enough movement speed options at all, I think is something that we're coming back on. Yeah. So but it's a push and pull, right? It's on a spectrum of how far Okay, I'm stopping there. So what he just said is basically the design philosophy around druid companions was basically to make them bad. And they're horrible, with the exception of Poison Creeper, right? Ravens are horrible, and wolves. I can't even tell you how many times I tried to make a wolf pack druid work. And I was having a discussion with a prominent member of the D4 community, and I told him, I think wolf companions in D4 is the worst skill I've used in any action RPG for the last five years. That is truly saying something. That is how absolutely terrible they are. And now I know from this that it was meant, they meant to do that. Companions and minions are very different. Again, you guys know I main Last Epoch. Last Epoch's my favorite game. A minion is a, my golem dies, I don't care. I could just resummon it. Skeleton dies, I can resummon it. Zombies are supposed to explode. Like a necro's army are exp ex expendable. Like, you could kill them, you could blow them up, that's the whole point, is you don't care. Whereas companions, your bear, your wolf, your saber tooth, your raptor, you, you know, your beasts that follow you around, they have skills, they have power, you know, they support you, you support them. It is a totally different minion type. Trying to say that you, you don't want one to be stronger than the other is very, very stupid, because they're supposed to be designed differently. I don't like that one. Moving on to a change that is going to make nightmare dungeons better, and that is enemy density. So what you see on screen right now is a nightmare dungeon and every red dot is an enemy. So something we're going to be getting is a much more dense nightmare dungeon, which will be great for leveling and blowing people up. So this is what's current. Let's see if I can get it. Come on. Here is what's coming. You will notice a lot more red dots, 20, maybe 30% more enemies. 
And then, of course, if you're running through and you're packing them all together, you're going to get some huge explosions. Do you remember last week when they talked about, oh, you moved it from three seconds to five seconds to teleport or TP out of everything and we basically got no answer? You are about to witness Blizzard saying we made a mistake and we're going to fix it. I know it seems impossible. Uh, in Diablo 4, we have a mechanic where when you're casting some kind of uh, spell or power, um, and you get hit by some damage, you don't get interrupted immediately. You have to take about 5% of your health and damage before it gets interrupted. And this makes things like town portaling back to town, leave dungeon, etc., mm -hmm. feel a lot better. Saving a prisoner. Saving a prisoner, yeah, absolutely, all, yeah. Time. Um, so if you're taking like really incidental damage, it's not gonna get interrupted. Um, but um, we were worried about a case where you're in the middle of a high intensity combat fight, or in the middle of a boss fight, and we felt like it was a little bit too easy to get out of get out of that um, in terms, and that's actually what it's referring to with the loop. Um, uh, which again, I felt like I felt like I felt like I nailed it, but I guess I guess you know. Um, and so, you know, there are other ways that we could have solved that, right? We could have said like, oh well, you get pushback on your cast, or like, oh well, it's only increased to five seconds if you're in a boss fight or something like that. But ultimately. Um, you know, what players really accurately pointed out is, look, this slows down the core loop of the game, of the game, in a way that's not fun. Yeah. So we're just changing it back to three seconds. Yeah. So it uh, was at three seconds, went to five seconds, going back to three seconds because, yeah. you know, obviously good player feedback, player and, feedback. Uh, from from every. We changed it. It was dumb. We listened to you, and we're moving it back. Is this Blizzard? We're listening to now during the Q&A section of the stream towards the end, there's really three topics that they cover and I'm not going to actually play any of this again. You can go back and watch it for yourself. The reason why I'm not going to play it is because there's there. There's no answers. They talk about. Yeah, we know it's a problem or yeah, we need to make changes or yes, we're discussing it, but nothing concrete whatsoever. They talk about resistances and how those feel really bad right now and they're going to fix it. They talk about mounts and how mounts traverse traverse the world. And really, it feels like they're going to ax the barricades, which they should just do immediately or allow you to sprint to like blast through them. And then the third thing they talk about is Asmongold has recently quit D4. And one of the reasons why he quit is getting one shot off screen because it is so zoomed in. And they don't mention Asmongold during this, but that is the video that's been going around. So they talked about it being zoomed in and having a larger field of view and being able to zoom out resistances, mounts, field of view. So those three things during the Q&A. And again, all they said is that it is in the works and they are going to make it better. So that is the dev stream for D4, their second campfire chat, you know, all in all, no, not a lot of nerfs, a lot of buffs. And I do think they need like a new marketing team. Like they need a whole new panel of people. Uh, I don't think they do a great job of presenting information, being serious when they should, cracking jokes when they should. At one point, Adam, who is moderating this, literally said the update is coming on the 12th or 14th and it wasn't even the right date. Anyways, my feedback for them is they actually need like a marketing team or something that does a better job at communicating. Uh, being someone that mains Barb, though, the changes that they are actively making 20, 21 days into a season should feel pretty meaningful. So from that ans uh, standpoint, I am pretty happy, but it still has a long ways to go. That's the video to ask at the end. Ask number one. I'm hoping today is the day I have earned your subscription. Hoping today is the day you make the decision to push that little red button. I would really appreciate it. But of course, only if you think I deserve it. If I don't deserve it, I'm going to work harder for you. Ask number two, check out my Patreon. Thank you to the first 86 members that have signed up. Become an instant ARPG VIP and get Patreon exclusive content at the first link in the description. And as of today, we will have nine updated season one build guides on Icy Veins. So if you're looking for an end game build guide, check out the links in the description. That's all I've got. Hopefully you were entertained or at least learned something. Aaron, out.